Hey, I've just finished reading this. A Wide Boy's Handbook. This is a sales book and it's um, touted as the Square Mile's most explosive sales guide ever. Um, I wouldn't agree with that. It's a guerrilla marketing, the guy calls it. Now, David Mason, who's the author, Essex boy, went to university and then went and worked in the city, worked for a stock brokerage, penny stocks, I assume, then took control of a, well, him and a partner took control of a failing stock firm, uh, slashed the marketing budget and turned everything into sort of high pressure, cold calling sales. And this is about that. I don't agree with that. And um, obviously data protection is changing, so you're not allowed to do that anymore. But there, there's some good points about this book. Um, you know, he talks about, let me just say this, the book starts with the quote, leave your morals at the door. So it's for that kind of sales, you know, uh, fast talking, financial conmen sort of thing. Although, of course, penny stocks are even regulated. But um, this would m definitely appeal to all those, I don't know, young lads from Essex who don't give a shit about what they're selling and just want to make a quick killing and don't really give a damn. Probably calling, probably teenagers calling with fake names from a company that will be around for six months. But there's also useful stuff in there. Sales is the same as persuasion. So what can you learn from this book about persuasion rather than about ripping people off? Um, some of the ways he puts it aren't that appetizing, like uh, close the doors, i.e. if you think there's going to be an objection to what you're saying, deal with it up front. Um, you know, if you think your friend who you're asking to go out to a concert with you is going to complain about getting to the station because it's cold, you close the doors beforehand. You say something like, come on, let's go to this concert. I'll tell you what, we'll get a lift to the station. We can go in Uber. There you go. No objection going to come up. Um, and then, yeah, other plus points, he talks about different types of closes, i.e. closing the deal, getting the agreement, use the alternative close. You know, not say, do you want to go to the concert? Or do you want to stay at home? Don't say that, because then they can say, I want to stay at home. You'd say, right, do you want to take the train to the concert, or should we take a cab? There you go. Um, in this, he uses the example of, okay, so this fantastic share I've been talking to you about, which is actually probably a piece of shit, should we go for 5000 or 50000 Assume they're going to go for it. The other close is the assumptive close. You just assume they want to buy, and then you're going with something like, okay, well, that's fantastic. I'll get the paperwork out to you. If you get that signed, and then get that back to me, we can get this started for you. Don't even assume they're going to say no. Um, overall, I'd give it, I don't know, what's average? Average is 5 out of 10, say in the middle. 6 out of 10, not the best sales book I've ever read, but, you know. Um, imagine a lot of the wide boys at who this is obviously aimed would enjoy it. In fact, I remember when I bought this about 10 years ago, surrounded by those kind of people. And they were like, oh my god, Nash, that looks powerful. Yeah, let's have a gander at that when you finished. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they do. <laughs> I definitely enjoy it. Um, so there you go. Entertaining. I mean, his story, I, I went over I think he ended up in prison as well. And now he does after dinner talking. Or he did when this was written. What he's up to now, I don't know. Um, it's okay. Uh, there are some useful points in it, like I said, about persuasion. But if you've got other things to read, other sales guides, don't rush out and buy it. There's better ways to do it. You don't have to be high pressure. You know, there's far more sophisticated ways to sell um, but I guess if you're in the kind of environment where all you want is your is your gold rolly um, and as much money as possible and you don't give a damn then you know of course they don't all speak like that some of them might work in places that require a far higher educational standard but um, <laughs> that that's 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 the long and short of it fairly okay average sales but written in a very uh, you know, rough and ready way. Um, we have a couple of good examples of how to speak effectively. Assonances in there. Assonances like rhyme, but the consonants don't rhyme. So, uh, late and fake would be assonance, whereas late and fate would be rhyme. And then the power of free. You know, you say free things about something. This cup is the best cup that makes the coffee taste the best. That will never break. They get as free things. Um, the mind likes freeze. And a couple of other good examples. It's only a quick read. Uh, it's a couple of hours read. It's fairly large print. And it's maybe 200 and... Not even 200 pages. So yeah, if you want something to read on sales that's entertaining with a few good tips, I'd recommend it. But only out of 6 out of 10. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.